Hi, this is Alan Gleason for ADSR, and in this video, we're going to be looking at Ableton's warp modes. So, there's six different modes to choose from, and the name of them suggests the type of material that they might be suited for, but this is not always the case. I find that if you're not varying too far from the original tempo of a sample, if it's beat oriented material, beats is good. Everything else I generally use complex. The downside of this is that complex mode uses more processing power. So we'll go through each of them individually and see their uses. These loops originally play back at 120. To begin with, I'll look at my drum track. By default, when you load a clip, this is the warp settings that it will have. And this can be changed in your preferences. So it's on beats mode. The preserve mode is transients and it's set to loop back and forward and the duration of the volume fade is set to 100, meaning that there'll be no fade. The different preserve modes that we have allow you to divide the audio up into specific note lengths. When it's on transients, the audio is divided up based on the transient in the material. If the tempo is increased, those, those transients are moved closer together and if it's decreased, the transients are moved further apart. By setting it to any of the other options, it preserves that duration from warping. This can sound peculiar, but can also be used as a special effect. So if I put it to one bar and I slow the tempo down to something quite drastic. Now what are we actually hearing there? What's happening is it's playing one bar unquantized and the gap between that and the next bar, because we've slowed down, is being looped back and forward. So if I just this mode here called our transient mode, we've got three options. We've got no looping, looping forward and looping back and forward. So if I turn looping off, so in here we've just heard one bar of material. If I turn looping forward on, what will happen is that the material at the end of the one bar, it will loop to the end of that and around again and around again using a small segment until the next loop comes along. This is not necessarily going to be in time, but it can be used as a special effect. So if I change it to a different division. If I adjust this volume fade, you'll hear the effect. We can get some interesting results. So that's taking a segment at the end and looping it around and around. This one will loop it back and forward. A little bit more length in the fade. It's looping back and reversing. Change the word distance. And depending on the style of music you're working in, this may or may not be useful. And then transient mode preserves or attempts to preserve the original material the most. Turning looping off when in transient mode and controlling the volume fade can produce very clean results, segmenting the audio into particular individual hits or transients. Moving on to my next track, we have a bass part. Play it at the original tempo. So I'm going to drop it by half, 60 BPM. So we're never going to get perfect time stretching by, by altering the tempo by this much. But let's see what happens if I put it to tones mode. A lot of the warping modes within Ableton rely on granular synthesis. So that's what this control refers to here in that it allows us to adjust the grain size that the audio has been divided up into. If I put it to its lowest, you can kind of hear the grains if I adjust the tempo even further. So we 
becomes very granulated if I turn it up to the max. The grains are larger and we get this kind of almost echoing, the grains are tripping over each other. So our goal is to find a sort of happy medium somewhere in between. Where we're not hearing the stretching effect, but we're getting the individual pitches without any overlapping. Again, with extreme time stretching and or pitch shifting, it's always going to be a compromise in the results that you're going to get. But the tones mode is useful for individual monophonic instruments. If you've got material that's more polyphonic or complex, the next mode along might be more suitable. So we've looked at beats, we've looked at tones, the next one along is texture. Again, we've got our grain size, which adjusts the size of the grains, but this time we've got a flux control, which introduces a certain amount of randomness into the way the grains are being played back. So if I turn this all the way down and we listen to this part for first at its original tempo. So if I slow it right down. So with the grain size quite low there, we can really hear the grains. And what flux will do, it will introduce a certain amount of randomness into the way the grains are played back, so it'll be less cyclical. Let's try the grain size higher. We turn it up too high, we start to get the echoing effect. This mode is also particularly useful for textural soundscape or noise material. And if we go back to our next track here and play it at its original tempo, we have a kind of noise percussion part. So again, if I slow this right down, we're getting a kind of distorted perspective, kind of tripping over itself kind of sound. We could try just switching into complex, see what sort of results we get. You can kind of hear stretching going on in there. So let's try it on texture and see what sort of results we can get. So again, it's a bit stretchy there, so let's experiment with the grain size. producing a relatively smooth result there. We are stretching it by quite a lot. Originally from 120 BPM, now we're at 30. Texture mode can also be useful when you're pitch shifting material. So if we go back to our synth part again, and we bring it back to the original tempo, and this time we'll just transpose the material. adjust our settings, see if we can get something more smoother. By increasing the grain size, we'll get more definition in the pitches that have been produced. But again, if we go too far, we'll get the overlapping sound. can also be used for an effect. Check it against the beats mode. So again, beats mode preserves the timing, but it does introduce a certain amount of artifacts. Getting smoother results in the pitches there, but maybe losing some of the timing information. So the re-pitch mode doesn't actually do any granularization on the material. It functions something like a turntable, in that when you alter the tempo, it also alters the pitch of the sound. 
So if I'm listening to the sound at its original tempo, if I adjust the tempo, it alters the pitch. Of all the time stretching modes, this one produces the smoothest results, but of course pitch shifting may not be desirable. But if you are using material that has no pitch content, such as maybe certain types of percussion, this will give you the best results. The second last mode is complex. This can often produce the best results. Compare that with say beats mode. Or texture. So, so it's producing quite an acceptable result. But again, the thing about complex mode is that it uses the most CPU. The last mode is complex pro. When you select this, you get two additional controls. You've got formants and envelope. So I'm going to audition this on a guitar part. So complex put it to complex pro and I bring the formants down these two modes are the same where complex pro is useful is that when you're also transposing when you transpose an instrument you offset the position of its formants which can lead to the instrument or voice sounding unrealistic the formants controlled here attempts to preserve the original formants of the sound, which give it its original characteristic. So if I play this sound and I turn up formants, you'll start to hear it sound a bit more realistic, although we are stretching it by a lot. Increase the tempo a bit. Choose the formants. The envelope adjusts the envelope of the grains. So the setting here will depend on the type of material that you're using, the pitch, whether it's complex or monophonic. So that was a quick overview of Ableton's warp modes. Hopefully that demystified any questions you might have about them. This has been Alan Gleason for ADSR and I'll talk to you again soon.